without a, a, a further delay, I wanted to introduce um, our guest of honor. And, and this is also uh, a gentleman who has been essential in the African Tourism Board. Um, I have to um, also set up uh, in 2018. And, um, and Cuthbert would say a little bit more, but I wanted to not let him wait. Uh, he's the Minister of Tourism uh, from a very important country when it comes to travel and tourism. It's the Kingdom of Eswatini. And those that don't know where Eswatini is, and I know there are people where we have, we have a global world and not everyone where knows where every country is, but if you hear Swaziland, then you know where it is. Uh, Swaziland, yes. it's now the Kingdom of Eswatini, it's in the southern part of Africa, and the Honorable Minister Vilakati has been, as I said, essential. He's always available, he's always there, he has joined a lot of our sessions even quietly in the background, and I want to thank you great, for this. Great, great minister. Yes, he's a, he's a global global player um, from from an important country, but he will tell you himself. Welcome, good evening, um, honourable minister. Um, good good evening, Johan, and uh, good good evening to all. Um, it's always great to be here and uh, to uh, listen and to hear from uh, uh, great friends. Um, as I've been introduced, I'm the Minister of uh, Tourism, but uh, I've also other feathers like, uh, because it's Minister of Tourism, Environment Affairs and Forestry. So it's, a, it's, a, it's quite a mouthful. Um, and, and I'm very excited uh, to be part of this discussion. Um, here we are talking rebuilding uh, travel, but um, I really wanted to focus more on, on, on Africa because, um, and uh, to that extent, uh, talk a bit about Eswatini. But maybe before I even get there, when I joined the African uh, Tourism Board, little did I know that I would meet great, friends, great people who were able to share with me their experiences in tourism. Um, my background is that of being an agriculturalist. So here I am now having to talk uh, uh, tourism, but um, I was used to traveling. So I used to experience a few things here and there. But when I became a member of the African Tourism Board, I gained a lot of experience from uh, the expertise that uh, uh, you have heard of uh, some of the individuals that have been introduced. And, uh, and for me, it was very exciting uh, to, uh, to meet, greet, and share experiences on how we can shape tourism in Africa and throughout the world. And, and that, that is the exciting part. And when I look at the, the year where we are right now and realize the achievements that we have had and obviously some challenges here and there, I, 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 can, I can attest that this has been a, a worthwhile journey uh, for us to achieve more. Where is Eswatini? Well, some would say, hey, we have never heard of such a country. Um, it is there. Uh, it's in Southern Africa, uh, surrounded by South Africa and Mozambique. Um, and uh, it's about 17,000 square kilometers. Very small, but with a big heart. Uh, and a very big heart for that matter. We, we pride ourselves as a country uh, that still follows um, uh, traditions and cultural uh, norms of um, the country. We are a monarch and um, we have preserved our culture, uh, which is very rich uh, for the past 400 years, which is basically from generation to generation. And uh, we therefore welcome guests uh, uh, from the continent, from the world, 
I will visit our country to witness some of these uh, cultural events and activities. They are there throughout the year. But more than that, when you look at um, the, the scenery, it's very majestic uh, with valleys and forestry, uh, plus uh, wildlife reserves. We pride ourselves that we have got the big five, which you can be able to see within a day. And, um, and um, this has helped us a lot, the combination of the culture and the combination of the wildlife and the scenery. But this is true for most of the African countries, as some of you uh, might have visited, because Africa prides itself of that. It still needs to be nurtured. And um, the issue of environment, I was happy that as a country where tourism and environment under one roof, because through the preservation of the environment, then we are able to say we have got a country, we have got um, uh, the environment uh, which we try to keep intact. Now, when I um, when I look back uh, in terms of the rebuilding of the travel. It has not been an easy journey, in particular after uh, March last year, when COVID-19 came and <clears throat> changed the way in which we were used to attracting people to come to our country. Um, I remember very well, I thought that uh, it was going to be just a one month thing. I said, ah, it's just a normal flu. It's going to be over within a week, a month. It's the whole year right now. So we have got to start adapting to the new norm because it's now a new normal. Thank God that uh, the doctors have been uh, very good and they've started producing some of these vaccines, which we hope will now help us to start uh, uh, opening our borders and visiting our brothers and sisters and our friends. What did we then do as a country and as a region and as Africa? Um, during that, those pandemics, each country obviously had to close its borders. And it meant the tourism sector was really affected and affected badly. In our country, tourism contributes about 10%. But last year, I mean, 10% of the GDP. But due to the COVID, it has gone down to almost 3%. Uh, hospitality industries have closed. People have, have been retrained. And we have got, and then we've started thinking about the new norm. How do we now survive? How do we rebuild our travel? How do we make sure that the people that used to enjoy the white land can still come to our countries? This is the big question that I think we need to discuss and deliberate on to make sure that we can rebuild our fragile tourism sector. But maybe before I end, um, tourism is really resilient. And if we package our narratives, we would ensure that uh, we can attract those people that love to travel. People have been um, quarantined and they are saying we want to come. And therefore it's about time to say we are open and Africa is now opening by the way. We are already seeing countries getting the COVID vaccines and we're hoping that by July, August, most of these countries would have been vaccinated. And that is an opportunity that we can uh, now cherish together. But as countries, what we then did was, we started focusing on the domestic tourism. We realized that there were lots of things that we didn't know internally. And that has been going from country to country. And fortunately, it's an opportunity that has been brought by this pandemic. Uh, because now we now have more ambassadors. We now have more people who now understand the countryside, who understand what uh, the beauty of the country, the sceneries, et cetera. And that to me 
has been the lessons that I've learned to make sure that uh, uh, as I present today, I can say, I now understand the country better because I've also tried to travel because there were certain places that I wouldn't travel because I wanted to lead from the front to make sure that yes, you can go to such and such a place. Yes, you can enjoy a meal in there. Yes, you can climb this mountain. And, and I think that is the lesson that I learned. As we move forward, we have a dedicated strategy that say, as we open our borders, let's make sure that we can incentivize the people and the tourists that are going to come to our various countries. We can now share with our neighbors so that if people come to Southern Africa, we can start looking at a, 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 a Bakwe, which will allow people to visit one country uh, and, and then to the next. But the key is to make sure that the protocols are similar because if the protocols are not similar, then we might, have, uh, we might encounter uh, problems uh, as we move forward. Otherwise, uh, with me, I'm very excited to be here. I look forward to uh, the discussions and to, um, to answer any questions. Uh, I realized that there are a number of guests, so I felt that I should just whet your appetite so that <laughs> I can be able to answer questions as we move along. Thank you very much, Johan, and thank you very much for listening to me. And, and, and thank you, Minister, so much uh, for laying this out. Before we get to question, if you allow us, I wanted to recognize uh, Louis Damour. Uh, he has very limited time, uh, I understand. So I want to give him the floor, and then we can maybe uh, go to questions for the minister and Louis, um, and then go on um, in the program. And in between, uh, it's, all, it's an open forum. So if you have questions of any sort in between, feel free to raise your hand. Uh, but um, but we have Anita um, raising right. Anita, let us know where you where you're from, and go ahead, please. Thank you very much, um, WTN team. This is a wonderful program. I'm happy to be here. I'm from Nigeria. I'm the president of the Women in Renewable Energy Association, and I'm also the founder, chairman of Smiling Simon Greenbelt Foundation, and we are into ecotourism. We are walking through the tourism value chain in such a way that we can decarbonize you know, the environment. And I love what the minister has spoken about, you know, the environment, protection of the environment through tourism. And I really would like to ask him, how can we all work together in Africa, particularly um, through that wonderful body, African um, Tourism Organization, that we can have a pavilion in one country of the 54 countries, you know, featuring our foods, our culture, tradition, our beverages, all under one little pavilion so that we can actually work with a peace mission because we can go through food and our beverages and foster peace in Africa. That is my question for him. Thank you. Um, no, thank you very much. This is a, mouth, a mouthful. Um, I was... Uh, Last in, in Nigeria, um, when I went to uh, Ibadan at IITA, and I learned a lot, um, uh, uh, particularly about um, business and also some of the cultural activities that uh, obtained in Nigeria. I was very, very excited. There were certain things I was trying to steal. <laughs> But uh, little did I know that at some point I'll be I'll be a minister. If I knew, then I would have been uh, I would have been sure that uh, some of your cultures uh, would have uh, come down south of Africa. I think the question that we are putting on the on, on the floor is very very important. How can we make sure that we can capitalize on the rich cultures of Africa? Because from country to country, the, the cultures are very very rich. Um, 
I think we need to start looking at that. When you look, mm. when I look at uh, some of these cultural events that are done outside uh, of Africa, like like the the, the, the Brazilian uh, cultural uh, event, I think we can have one in Africa, and um, uh, through African Tourism Board, I will have to push Cutbet to make sure that we host one, so that all of these cultures can come together. Uh, it can take, it can start as a weekend and thereafter maybe for the whole week. Imagine having all of those cultures under one roof and each one showcasing what they are good at. Of course, I know that uh, a sort thing would beat you, but uh, that's for another <laughs> day. <laughs> I think it's a wonderful idea, Casper, please. Uh, no. Let's check it as uh, part of the um, the menu that as we move forward. I, yeah. I really would like to take this one on immediately. No, and this is a, a very good uh, feedback, Anita. And, um, and of course, we didn't forget Cuthbert. Um, uh, but Cuthbert uh, definitely needs to weigh in there. Let's Before we go to Cuthbert, uh, Taleb raised his hand. So let's go to Taleb and then we go to Cuthbert, if that's OK. Thank you so much. I just want to salute the minister. He's been a great minister. And I want to tell him something, a secret between him and I. He shouldn't worry about the fact that he's not specialized in tourism. You're an agricultural person, you have passion for tourism. I was like you, I came from architecture, from politics into tourism. But you have to have passion and you have it. Minister, what you said is absolutely correct. You are a great man and you'll do a lot of good things, I'm sure. Just wanted to say that before we move on. Thank you so much. Thank you, Taleb. And yeah, and, and the minister already addressed uh, Katbert Nikubi. Katbert Nikubi uh, is the uh, chairman of the African Tourism Board. African Tourism Board uh, started in 2018, and Katbert has been there from the very beginning. Uh, African Tourism Board, when you think about African Tourism Board, you definitely think about Katbert Nikubi in Pretoria. And there's a lot going on, and, and I think the definitely. suggestion from uh, Moses is uh, quite important. And Cuthbert is now, I think, joining us today from Namibia. He's traveling. And uh, I have to uh, say that we're all, all of us who knew Cuthbert uh, had COVID in a quite a bad way. And it looks like he fully recovered. And there's a little bit of a story also uh, through it. And if you want to tell the story, feel free to do so. Uh, we've published it in eTurbo News, but uh, it's amazing the recovery Cuthbert made. He looks like the old Cuthbert, and I don't mean old in a way of old, but you're looking young and, and, and fresh. And thank you for joining both sessions, Cuthbert. From, from Africa and saved by Africa. Yes. <laughs> thank you so much, Jürgen. Really appreciate I mean, your support and your prayers as well. Honorable Minister, thank you so much. We really appreciate uh, always eager to move and to run. And uh, we really appreciate uh, as, as we are aligning Eswatini within the uh, global tourism space, we acknowledge and we're noting your endeavors and your participation as well uh, within the African Tourism Board. We really appreciate and thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much once again, yeah, again uh, Dr. Talo. Uh, Dr. Taleb, as we celebrate uh, the high and byways of success drawn by yourselves and, 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 and team players behind the World Tourism Network, uh, in su supported by the African Tourism Board in bringing the tourism champions together in so many engagements that we have had. May I hasten to echo the words of our executive member and patron of African Tourism Board, Dr. Taleb, that all mankind originated from Africa. It doesn't matter the color of your skin, it doesn't matter your height and your length, we are all brothers and sisters. The beauty part of it is that uh, tourism has cemented that narrative and reality of it. May I therefore be allowed to go much further to say that Africa is the richest continent on earth with so much gold mined from mountains and valleys 
of almost all the member states. Diamonds produced in South Africa, in Botswana, in Namibia, where I am today, Liberia, Sierra Leone, just to name a few, we produce the best cocoa. Africa produces the best tea that has found its market on the shelves of the United Kingdom and beyond. So therefore, Africa has place of platinum and layers that can supply the whole world for the next decade. What am I saying, colleagues? When it comes to tourism, it is the only primary drivers of economic growth and job creation in Africa. We have a unique history, as I allude to my minister, that with our diversity across the continent, our natural wonders that have gained momentum and attention amid the local and global increase in cultural heritage. I allude with you, Anita, that with our rich culture, cultural heritage, we need to have a conference where we have a conversion of all our diversity to celebrate the beauty of Africa through tourism. Our 54 member states have tremendous opportunity to become and remain vibrant hosts for both domestic and international tourism and investment at large. Therefore, as we set the pace for activation to our tourism economy, dear brothers and sisters across the globe, Africa and Africa is open. Africa is ripe. Come visit and invest. This is your home. We will welcome you with wide open arms. Thank you so much, Jürgen. We really appreciate. Thank you so much. No, thank you, uh, Cuthbert, for your input. Thank you, and, thank you. And thank you again, um, um, uh, Minister Bilakati, uh, for your presentation. And uh, we, we keep this an open uh, discussion. So if there are important issues or questions, bring them up. You can also email us later. We can share it with the Honorable Minister, with Cuthbert. And uh, we're going to have many more sessions and discussions to get into more details, um, I'm sure. Also wanted to recognize uh, Zine Lukwana. She's joining us from uh, Johannesburg. And she has been essential also in the African Tourism Board. Now let's go from Africa to London. Um, and Jürgen, uh, Jürgen, can I comment on? Uh, uh, sure, on sure, go ahead. Uh, I, I just wanted to mention um, that had it not been for COVID, IIPT was planning a global summit in Africa on the theme, come home to Africa, birthplace of the global family. And Cuthbert, maybe IIPT and the African Tourism Board can cooperate on such a conference as soon as COVID permits. And I think that's a wonderful idea, and we can definitely help to coordinate this. Now, Cuthbert was saying something, but you're muted, Cuthbert. No, I, I was just saying uh, thank you so much, uh, Luis. We really appreciate your energy. And as African Tourism Board, definitely would it would be an honor for us to synergize and start working together. I remember we participated together in one of the conferences a few years ago. In to Hansbeck, it will be a great pleasure. Let's work towards it. Most probably, let's convene and have a discussion so that we can start the preparations. Yeah, okay. Dr. Rafai is aware of this. Uh, I've had discussions with Dr. Rafai on such a conference. And uh, Jurgen Cuthbert, uh, I look forward to uh, further communication with you to see if we can move this forward. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, Cuthbert is raising physically his hand, but I meant actually you can click on the raising hand button, but Cuthbert, uh, go ahead. Thank, thank you so much, Jürgen. I, I've been trying to see if I could uh, raise my hand on the system, but it looks like there's quite a lot of complexity. Yeah, colleagues, I really believe that we have so much glorified the monster that has brought so much havoc in our spheres of life, so much that 
it has really overshadowed the brighter side of life. The minister, Vilakadi from Eswatin, uh, I mean, I allude to his sentiments that the break that was created by the uh, COVID-19 has afforded him to reset and explore and learn much within the domestic space so I, I plead with all of us, let's start planning with confidence that we have yet crossed over. Yes, as Andrew has indicated that and emphasized the need for a precautional measures. Yes, it must include the rollout of, of, of the mass vaccine if that is possible. But let us leave today for tomorrow. We acknowledge and really appreciate Louis Damo for their plan of action. In Africa, we have seen a steady drop, especially on the infections and death. Hence, most member states are now easing uh, the lockdown levels. So it's happening indeed, and let's all positively make it happen with a new norm, of course, of doing things, let's accept the reality and start living our lives, making the best we can under these circumstances. Actually, this afternoon, I had the, the privilege of touring one of the biggest national parks that borders Namibia, Botswana, Zambia, and Zimbabwe. And we have seen an influx of tourists so let us move and let us with confidence and look at the brighter side of greater things, especially within our tourism sector. Thank you again. Thank you very much.